Let little f be a continuous, real-valued function defined on a closed interval from a to b. Furthermore, let big F be the function defined for all x by big F is the integral from a to x of little f of t dt. Then, big F is continuous on a, b. It's differentiable on a, b. And furthermore, the derivative of big F is little f. Now what FTOC part one does is it combines both the integral and the derivative. It tells us that they are opposites. That if you go in the, der in the derivative direction, you're going down the ladder, but then the integral direction, you're going up the ladder. So this is a major theorem in calculus right here. Let's begin breaking this down little by little. We have the integral from some constant a, and it could be any constant, it could be zero, it could be five, it could be a hundred, it could be negative five, up to our variable x. And our function inside is in terms not of x, but it's in terms of t. This is extremely important. Now, what it says here is that if you take the derivative of big F, you end up with little f. Or in other words, the derivative and the integral kind of cancel out to just give you that nougaty center inside of the integrand. In other words, if you were to take the derivative of big F of X, this is the same thing as taking the derivative of the integral from a to x of little f of t dt. And as we know from part two of the fundamental theorem, we need to have a antiderivative of little f of t. Well, if we go backwards in this theorem, which we should never do, but for the sake of argument, let's do it. If we go backwards, the derivative of big F is little f. Well, what that means by definition is that big F is the antiderivative of little f. It's one up the ladder of derivatives from little f. So we can use big F as the antiderivative of little f. So this is the derivative of big F of x minus big F of A, and this right here is using the fundamental theorem of the calculus, part two. Now, the derivative of big F of X, we already said that the derivative of big F of X is little f of X, and the derivative of negative F of A. Well, A is a constant, and when you plug any number into a function, you're getting just another number and the derivative of some number is just zero. And so, what we've noticed here is that the derivative of big F of X is equal to little f of X. Now, what happens when you flip your limits of integration? What would happen if you were taking F of X is equal to the integral from X to A of F of T dt? Well, then when you took the derivative of this, this would be the derivative of the integral from x to a. This is the derivative of the left-hand side as well. Of f of t dt. And if you use FTOC part 2, this is the derivative of big F of a minus big F of X. And of course, the derivative of big F of A, which is a constant, is just zero, minus the derivative of big F of X is a little f of X. And so you just have a negative in front of your functions, just negative F of X. And the reason for this is because when you flip your limits of integration, you always put a negative out in front. So this does make perfect sense. 
Now, big F is defined as the integral from some constant to a variable of some other function, f of t. So let's figure out graphically what big F actually is in terms of little f. Here I've defined little f of t to be the constant 10, it's a straight line. And we're gonna define big F of x as the integral from negative three to x of little f of t dt. Well, big F is defined as the integral from our constant negative three to any number x. So let's first figure out some values of big F. Let's find big F of zero. We're plugging zero into x, and the only x that I see here is this x right here. The reason why little f is in terms of t and not x is that you would also be plugging, if, the, if little f was in terms of x, you would also be plugging zero into this function right here, in which case you would get a constant, not a function. We want to take the integral of some function. So we let this be in terms of some other variable, we call it t, and we let the upper limit be x. So we're going to plug zero into x. We're taking the integral from negative three to zero of little f of t dt, which is 10, because that's what we defined it to be. So we're going to go from negative three to zero. Zero's right here. This span right here is positive three. The height is 10. Three times 10 is equal to 30. So f of zero, big F of zero is equal to 30. Let's try another one. How about big F of negative seven? We're gonna plug negative seven into x. So we have the integral from negative three to negative seven of little f of t dt. However, if we go from negative three to negative seven, we're going right to left. We need to flip the limits of integration, which means that we have to put a negative in front of my integral. So we have the negative integral from negative seven to negative three of f of t dt. That's better. If you're going backwards right to left on the t-axis or the x-axis when you're taking the integral, you could just know that you're going in the negative direction so your dx's are negative. And a negative times a positive is a negative. That's one geometric way to think about this. Or you could take the integral normally here from negative seven to positive three and then just put a negative in front of your integral sign. This is the better way to do it. So negative seven, negative three is a space of four times 10 is equal to 40 times that negative one in front, which is negative 40. And that's what it means for big F to be defined as the integral of another number.